Still disaster saves. They keep getting weirder and wackier, and this is this one's up there. So we are the Union of Soviet Republics. The map's not the worst of it. It's 1953, so we're in full-on Cold War mode. We've lost, well, most of the Soviet Union to everyone else, and we are at war with quite literally the world. Yes, it's us against the world. Fortunately, we do have a large army. Unfortunately, Germany and Japan have taken pretty much all of our country except for some parts. Fortunately, we still hold a good amount of the heartland, but we are down. We are definitely down. Let's see. Focuses are going to be pretty much pointless by now. Everything that should be done is done. Maybe I can dabble here. Maybe? I don't know. Research. Well, the research done. Everything pretty much is done except for some special tech. So might as well grab some cannons uh, and grab some naval stuff, I suppose. What else am I going to do? Everything else is quite literally done. In terms of production, it looks like we have a fairly large stockpile of pretty much everything except for tanks. And tanks is going to be important. Attention, this is a Pravda News broadcast, Voice of the People. Comrade Lenin has decreed all workers must prepare for the oncoming hardships. In modern war, mobility is key. Comrade Rokosovsky recommends you prepare using War Thunder using the link below to receive a large free bonus pack including multiple premium vehicles, premium account, boosters and much more for optimal training. War Thunder is the most comprehensive vehicle combat game ever made where the proletariat can use more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships from the glorious 1920s up to the faraway future of the 2000s. Each vehicle is so gloriously detailed and modeled down to the individual components so you can see the true Soviet quality of the glorious T-34. Using PC, PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and S as well as previous console generations, simply download and play. So we'll, we'll reconfigure our production. I don't need this many trucks. We already have 42,000 in stock. I also have a large amount of artillery in stock as well as support equipment in stock. Again, you got decent production for most stuff. I'm not really sure how you ended up in this position with the amount of production you've got going, but who am I to judge? We're going to tone things down a little. Uh, let's go down from factories. See, you've got a lot of medium tanks, advanced medium tank chassis, and you're making T-44s. Uh, these are expensive, maybe a little too expensive. You don't need this much armor to fight the AI. What you need to fight the AI is a whole bunch of soft attack. I'm going to make things a little bit more on a budget. So I'm going to go down to welded armor, cost you a little bit of armor, and I'm going to go down to Christie suspension. I, I just prefer it because of the extra speed allowing for some weird and wacky encirclements and the auto loader or the stabilizer. One of these two has to go. I'm thinking I don't need that much defense on a tank. So I'm going to go and get rid of the auto loader and I'm going to replace it with easy maintenance. It's expensive, but it makes you your tanks cheaper and more reliable and that is perfect suddenly this tank is both faster and cheaper and we're going to produce as many of those as we can but we're going to tone things down a little bit because i also want to put factories on your other great advantage here you have modern tanks researched where are they i saw them just now the t54 the modern tank chassis you have these these are what's going to save our bacon in the end uh we're gonna go down again christy suspension because i like the speed might be wrong gonna go with welded because i don't need cast i don't need that much armor on my tanks i prefer to get speed getting rid of the auto loader in place of the easy maintenance there we go and these should be decent we got modern turrets and an advanced heavy cannon i could probably go with a different cannon like the the howitzer but no let's go with the advanced heavy cannon yeah let's get speed up a little bit i like fast tanks so it's it's a little more expensive but it's so much better i am going to take away factories from the medium tanks that will serve as replenishment and i'm going to put them towards the modern tanks who will serve as fresh meat i guess and i'll keep producing everything else as far as we can because we have a massive problem that massive problem is is resources. We don't have the steel because it's all occupied and we don't have the tungsten because it's all occupied. We also don't have the aluminum or the rubber because it's all occupied. We're still not making anything in, in, in terms of air power so we'll, we'll need to deal with that as well. I'll reserve some factories for that but first we need to uh, deal with the problems at 
hand. Construction. Yeah, we don't need that many sieves at this point, my brother. Uh, let's get rid of all of these. Everything gets to go. Where are you building this supply hub? Okay, I'll, I'll leave you to build that supply hub and the railway upgrades, but I'm getting rid of all the AA. We can build more of that later if we have to. We probably will, I admit. What we're going to be building first is infrastructure. Let's take a look and see if there's provinces that provide resources. Uh, like here, this is going to be extra. So upgrade every province that provides tungsten, steel, aluminum, oil, rubber, that kind of stuff. Just so we have a little bit of extra equipment and well, I mean, a little bit of extra resources available to us. Unfortunately, we have lost a great deal of our natural resources. We will have to strike back and take some of that stuff. But, you know, could could always be worse, I guess. It, it could always be worse. Now, with that done, the next step is going to be building a whole lot of synthetic refineries in every place that has a good amount of infrastructure because we want it to be built quickly. It's going to provide us with much needed oil and some much needed rubber. And we're just going to have to accept the fact that for the foreseeable future, we are not going to be a great power. We're going to be holding on by the skin of our teeth. Other things, officer corps. Ah, I hate the fact that you've gone mass assault doctrine. But there's people who swear by this. I don't. I hate it. If you're going up against the AI, it is numerically, it, it, it's by the numbers, superior firepower is the single best doctrine. Simply based on the stats it gets you. There are some things to be said about mass assault, but I don't like it. I hate it. And I especially hate the fact that it changes your combat width, but yeah, different discussion. So we'll be moving out of this as soon as we get another 500 political power filled up so I can quickly go down superior firepower, but that's for later. Yeah, I'm just going to go with static warfare until we've stabilized things. In terms of the Navy, you have no Navy, so that's easy. And in terms of the Air Force, well, you have no Air Force, so that is also easy. Might as well get air crew, sa air, air crew surveys. So we'll get cheaper doctrines once we do start getting into things, but that is a later. I'm going get rid of Tukhachevsky eventually and get him for the like the close air proponent I guess. Tukhachevsky has to go. What other picks did you make here? Uh, Chuikov, infantry expert. Good. Konyev reduces the enemy air power. Good. And Rokosovsky for your tanks. All right. These are really good picks. You could switch out Konyev for the uh, close air support guy if you do have air superiority, which you don't, so it's okay. You have Ye Yegerov, army defense expert. <sighs> I would have gone with Blücher Vasily here for the extra speed, but defense is all right, especially in our current situation. Now for the political side of things, Alexander Shil Shilapyov. Yeah, this guy's useless. All the research is done. You don't need him. He gets to go. Just eat him and get either Iron Lazar for extra construction speed or get Lev Trotsky, because obviously you want Trotsky. Everything else is fine. Closed economy, obviously. Should have gone to total mobilization, but you no longer have war support. Service by requirement can still go up. Wish you didn't have to. It's all terrible, but we'll, we'll leave it as is. We'll just leave it as is. All right, fighters, you got modern airframes. You have modern small airframe. Yes, we're going to make a fighter to try and win our skies back. What we need is a lot of fighting power, obviously. I'm going to slap as many heavy machine guns on this bad boy as I can. The biggest engine I can fit, uh, which is going to be a jet engine, and then smaller things like self-sealing fuel tanks. If you have the rubber, we do have a little bit of it, as well as drop tanks for extra range and some armor plates. But ee! armor plates are heavy so why don't we get double jet engine yeah this is one expensive fighter though so i don't really know if we'll get much use out of these guys but hey mig nines we're gonna put them into production we'll, we'll see how many of these we can make i, I don't think we'll be able to make many <laughs> Fortunately, we have a large stockpile of pretty much everything else, so we do have a bit of a buffer while I rebuild the economy from scratch. We can take a lot of these decisions. Uh, all of them have become quite expensive. Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, none of this is particularly great, so we'll just leave this for what it is. I need my political power elsewhere. What I'm going to do is develop some tungsten mines, because tungsten is really good, as well as some extra steel. Extra steel, always good. I want as much of my resources available to me as possible. I'm not going to take a focus to get more political power in my hands, and we'll see what we can do. Fortunately, we do have a lot of stability. For the front lines, everything looks awful. A little tip is... 
if you want to use field marshal orders, I'm going to quickly delete everything. You can see how everything is split into armies. So the field marshal order and then separate armies assigned to it based on their color. I'm going to delete all of your orders. Whoops. I'm going to make this a little cleaner, just a little bit cleaner. There, that is a little bit cleaner. So we have Trotsky here. He is going to, yeah, you, you've picked a good position. So he's going to try and hold the position you've chosen here. All, oh my God, all the way up there. Fine. We'll hold this line. Uh, it's mostly worthless dirt that we're giving up anyway. You've decided to group yourself around the supply hubs. If you hold these supply hubs, the enemy will not and cannot advance simply because this is a massive supply dead zone. You can tell by the uh, current strength or rather weakness of these divisions here. Perfect positioning on the side of the front. Wish you didn't have to fight here, but you do and you're doing well. So Trotsky can stay where he is. You've picked a good amount of yeah you picked a really good position and then we have Tukhachevsky he's trying trying to hold the west the west is falling but there is still hope what we're gonna do here is hold shift and draw a field marshal order so hold shift draw front line and use the right mouse button to do it and then draw all the way up here and now all these guys are unified under a single field marshal order they're not split into separate armies it's so much Cleaner. I wish I could give Tukachevsky organizer as well. No, he has organizer, skilled staffer, an expert delegator. Mm. Wish I could have given him that, but he's never going to level up again. To the north here, you're also guarding. Okay, so what I see that you've done and you've done well is use the supply system against the enemy. You have a very solid, well, relatively solid defense around the heartland where all of your supply and the enemy supply is. So there is fighting going on here, but in your far east, or rather near east by now and north, there's almost no fighting going on because there is no supply. So most of these hubs are disconnected because the Soviet railway system and the Germans haven't really done anything to fix it. As a result, all of these troops up north are dying and you can hold with a bare minimum amount of divisions just sitting here. Perfect. Love what you've done here. This is a problem though. So what we're going to do here is use these tanks. I see you have 18 tank divisions and we're going to use these to drive the enemy back into the sea. You're doing that. Okay. But I don't like this tank division. What don't I like about this tank division? Well, let me tell you. It's too small. In my personal experience, I want my tank divisions to be big heavy hitters. Your spearheads. You can afford to make these more expensive and make these bigger. I want chunky tank divisions. I want 40 with 42 with and at minimum 30 combat with tanks. These are just too small to have a major impact. Other than that, I would very much like if you add some logistics companies because obviously logistics are going to be great. But yeah, I I don't hate what you've done. It just don't love it either. So what I'm going to do is increase the amount of medium tanks in this, but your organization's pretty terrible. So I need more trucks. <laughs> it's just Oh, I hate it. So something like this, 30 combat with. I will reconfigure this as we change doctrines as well. I can't afford to change either because we are lacking so many medium tanks. I'll use what you have and then I'll change over to that new template once this naval landing has been cleaned up and I have some breathing room with my tanks. I'm going to stop this. In, uh, yeah, no, I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep pushing here. We're going to try our very, very best to stop the enemy invasion here and we'll drive them back into the sea. Uh, other than that, we're, all we can do really is hold and try not to bleed. So what are you feeling on the front lines? Your Strelkovaya Divizia. Not bad. I don't like signal companies. Really don't like like him would probably get rid of them it is going to end up being cheaper i also don't like that really like the combat with you're going for here this is my preferred division but the combat with is awful simply due to the way that you've picked mass assault but for now i'm gonna change it to this this gives us extra manpower and reserve extra equipment and reserve our units are gonna get a little bit weaker but i think we can afford that i am somewhat tempted to use field hospitals just to get that war support protection and a little bit of trickle back but I don't think it's worth it. I really don't think it's worth it right now. Maintenance companies might be good to steal some equipment. Maybe? Can I afford that? I think I can afford that. Yeah, let's add maintenance companies instead. All right. And then you're using garrison divisions to guard your coastline. Yeah, this is fine. I would make them a tiny bit bigger. They don't have to be amazing though, so just... Uh, something like this. Yeah, that's fine. Speaking of coastline, this is all the coastline you have left. And it looks like you're actually literally covering every single inch of it. Love that. <laughs> Absolutely love it. 
So we've got Japanese modern armor here. So many enemies, so many enemies. How did you manage to get up in a fight with everyone? And how did the Axis manage to capitulate? Oh, they're the Confederates. Oh yeah, this is non-historical. This is 100% non-historical. I wonder if we have any potential friends. We can get Afghanistan on our side maybe. And it looks like the allies are still involved and they're not really fighting us. So we might, oh yeah, the allies consist of Mosley exiled to Ireland contentious topic there and the last remembrance of imperialist south africa if i can get my tanks rolling in the direction that i want them to yeah we've got this cleaned up all right perfect and the rest of the front is more or less holding sometimes a little less sometimes a little more all right so the enemy is now contained in this romanian port every division that loses organization in here is simply destroyed and wiped out so good amount of kills we'll get here rest of the front is holding and uh, soon we can consolidate fix our tank issue and go from there see what we can uh, get done it's absolutely vital that i don't let the enemy break through here if this tile breaks i have a world of problems uh so it's it's absolutely vital that that tile does not break i need to funnel tanks in there to make sure it stays open also never counterattack if you've just lost just usually don't do that because it tends to not go well unless you can find some numerical superiority somewhere and you're not going to break back through all right that ends the naval threat yeah, they're going to keep throwing naval invasions at us because that is what the ai does but if you can keep your coastline protected like this, we should be fine-ish. All right, 30 combat width. It's on a budget and we're definitely short many, many tanks. But we're going to fix that by consolidating. So what I'm going to do here is take understrength divisions and press this button, consolidate. What that does is merge many weak divisions into a single division that has full fighting power. So in this case, we would merge three divisions to make one fully functional one. And everything that is left over, so excess equipment, goes back into the manpower pool to be redistributed. So now we have a single combat capable 30 with tank division that has taken a whole bunch of casualties. Oh my god. So we're going to do that a couple of times to consolidate and get some strong units going that we can then use to take the fight to the enemy. Yeah, we're down to seven combat capable medium tanks. Not great. Well, let's put those seven tanks here to take the weight off the enemy offensive for a little bit. And then we'll see. I really don't want to lose the river line here. So if I can, I'm going to use some command power. A nice little trick if you're almost out of command power. Take a division, any division, select it, give it a fresh general. And then, oh, you don't have generals. Never fear. There are other tricks. Let me, let me just show you. Assign him to this tank army, for instance. Take all of the tanks, so everything except the units you just assigned to it and unassign those units so they don't have an army for now that leaves him all alone just one division and now you can press last stand on a budget it only costs three command power instead of the usual whatever it would be and then you can rush the tanks back in and assign them to that general is it perfect no does it work yes it's a little cheesy but i think at this point a little cheese is uh, well deserved speaking of well deserved i'm getting all of these things done just so i can get some damn steel it is hurting my economy but honestly what economy at this point i also forgot to check your casualties let's see this war has claimed almost 80 85 million lives in total apparently we had allies they're all gone and we've lost 20 million men <laughs> okay so you've lost 21 million men. You have killed almost 30 million Germans, so they're probably on their last legs. The Italians, yeah, the... Okay, uh, the Japanese have lost 11 million. All of these guys have lost millions and millions of men. So realistically, they're out of men. The Baltics have no more manpower and they're on scraping the barrel. So that's done and dusted. Same for Germany. Italy still has reserves. Japan still has some reserves and is only on adult serfs. We can break Germany if we can just hold the line. Simply due to the fact that we still have men and we can mobilize more men while they are literally all out of duty. Dudes. And while I wait for fun things to happen, I'm going to try and use my tanks in small offenses to punch through here and there, try and take victory points where I can. Unfortunately, the tanks just get everywhere too slow. And to ensure future success, I have also renamed our armor divisions to the members, so the member divisions will spearhead any future attacks. And if you want to see yourself featured in one of my glorious videos leading the charge, why don't you consider signing up for membership? Now, I do have high expectations from these members. I 
I will need you boys to retake Minsk and push into Minsk overall successful. Let's see if I can hold on to it because it's uh, it's one of those tiles on the front line that's usually quite difficult to hold. So we'll see if we can actually maintain defenses there. I'll put the armor in there until things solidify and we can get a bit of entrenchment up. It's a small victory, but it's a victory. I win just by surviving, considering the enemy has no more manpower. All right, let's take a little trip with the tanks. I'm gonna clean house up north. It should be a lot of divisions we'll be able to destroy there if everything goes well. And we can establish two very distinct defensive lines. Overall, should make for a much cleaner game. In a perfect world, I would then be able to push straight down here towards our but I really don't have the supply for that. All right, so everything up north is encircled. It's not huge, but it is something and I am willing to take it. Just remember, slow and steady wins the race. Slow and steady wins the race. Small encirclements here and there. We're not going to be changing the overall battle, but every division we destroy is a division several of our enemies cannot replace. And on the whole, we just make the whole situation a lot more bearable for us if we can just kill a lot of enemies. Every little pocket helps us get ahead just a little bit. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah, and we're doing it. I'd say we are certainly on our way to make something happen here. Every blow weakens the Germans more and more. And the Germans are really, well, Germans and the maybe the Americans are really what's holding up the entire enemy front. If Germany falls, that's it. It'll all be ogre. I'm slowly switching out medium tanks for modern tanks. That just eases my logistics a little bit every time. I really want to change the motorized out for mechanized as well to have that really big oomph, but this should be fine. Ideally, I'll build a stockpile of tanks sufficient for me to actually start recruiting additional divisions so I can have more than uh, just the seven. But with the seven so far, I've been able to make small encirclements, push the enemy back where it needs to, contain naval invasions that do manage to at some point maybe break out. Overall, can't complain. We're getting somewhere slowly, absolutely slowly, but we are getting somewhere. Well, I've bit the bullet and I did it. I had 500 army experience, give or take, saved up. I've switched over to superior firepower, integrated support, and then we'll go down to shock and awe. This just maximizes our soft attack, just strengthen our divisions overall it will help trust me it will absolutely help engineering schools not that great i'll switch these out for well none of these really matter all that much do they might be tempted to switch back to ideological loyalty though since i am going to lose about five percent recruitable pop which admittedly pretty big pretty big deal so i might switch back out but uh, then again, I might just be able to reclaim some territory here. I just need a couple of concentrated pushes in the right direction to get some of my land back. Uh, oh, if I could just make it to Leningrad or something, but there is still a whole lot of enemy divisions in the way. But Germany is weakening. Germany is definitely weakening. I don't think they have a single division at full fighting strength anymore. And even my basic bitch infantry is uh, able to push back the front now. Everyone is on their last legs, and it just so happens that Soviet legs are longer. And another juicy, juicy pocket. These are just so much fun to create. It does not even take that much effort or troops. Just find a bulge, cut it off, destroy it. And I've been able to inch my way north, starting at the railway line. So we've got a lot of territory back. We've killed a lot of divisions. And the strategic situation it has definitely improved to our advantage. I just need to start taking some of my stuff back. So I'm going to try and force a breakthrough here towards Makchalka, la 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 la, whatever this place is get an encirclement going there hopefully i can shore up with infantry and not get my tanks encircled because if the tanks die i die if i can pull it off if i can just pull that off i will be amazing i will be able to take control of the caucasus front once again but it's it's a gamble i mean it's it's a pretty big huge gigantic gamble though Damn, might be too much of a gamble. Yeah, the AI is really quick on its feet responding here. I'll have to settle for something smaller. Oh, I was a little distracted. Uh, looks like the Japanese have managed to land a very, very large amount of troops here. Maybe my strategy of just guarding my ports and letting them land so I can kill them is somewhat backfiring? No, no, I don't make mistakes, no. 
Ah, couldn't be it. I've also started rebuilding my navy. I'm using the best submarines I can possibly build with the uh, designer that makes them even cheaper. Hopefully, we'll be able to at least retake control of the Black Sea or just annoy the enemy enough to, to back off just a little bit. I admit, I do feel a little overtaxed. I'm not entirely sure how to proceed. All right, let's see if I can make a, a some sort of cannonball run towards Tickfin. If I can take Tickfin, these guys should lose supply. At least a lot of them should, and I might be able to push back up. Why is there no supply connection to the capital? Yeah, they bombing my railway so much, they don't have anything to respond to it. Like, there's also non-stop naval invasions now because I changed directions. Instead of having these 72 units cover the entire coastline, I just have them guarding the ports. I want the enemy to land troops so I can then kill them. So uh, it looks drastic, it looks terrible, but we should be able to make something happen here. Really want to start sinking some of the enemy navy though, but my submarine fleet is getting there. All right, small, small breakthrough in the north. Hope, hope, hope we can capitulate. No, not capitulate, capitalize on this. It's not huge, but it's something. Let's kill these units and then extend the front. We're, we're getting somewhere. I just wish it was getting there a little quicker. Also, I may need to revise my strategy on letting the enemy land troops here because while I'm killing a lot of them it is ending up being costly in terms of the manpower I spend because these garrison divisions really not that great to the north here I might be able to break through towards Arkhangelsk if I can manage that brilliant if not eh, it was a good attempt I'm gonna try and cut off this bulge with the tanks just gonna rush through the north link up with the other end of the gigantic mess and just leave tanks in my wake just as <laughs> <laughs> as I move north. Hopefully it works out. If not, I'm in a bit of a trouble because I am I am not sure what to do if this does not work out. So I'm just peeling off tanks as I push further north and I hope I still have enough strength by the time I reach these Turkish divisions. Might, oh, might actually just make it. Might actually just make it. Get a reinforced attack on there. Okay, okay, so we might actually push through. Pinning attack. You, oh god, no. Oh, come on, force attack. I'm gonna do it. I need the force attack through here. Oh, doors open, doors open. All right, so we've cut that entire thing off. Let's also reposition all of these troops to the actual main front. The pocket units are, they're, they're gonna starve. I can, I can leave them to their fate. The tanks keep the door open and start pushing aggressively, aggressively pushing. These units reposition and I then need to make sure that I at least get supply to the region and now we kill everything in there. Oh, that is gonna be wonderful if I can hold that open at least. And finally, we're seeing more green bubbles, still some red, but mostly green. The entrenchment really helping out. And as I shorten my lines, there's more units available for the defense. I'm still getting pushed back here and there, but I should be able to start striking back with my armor once this enormous pocket is cleaned up. That is not just a lot of divisions we have trapped, but just so much territory we no longer have to cover. That's going to make it a lot easier to defend ourselves. Oh yes, this is like well, 50 divisions, maybe 55. That's going to be good riddance. And it looks like my submarines are starting to get some kills. Most of the enemy fleet is outdated and old so I'm thinking my boys will start doing very well I can't see the battle report properly but you can tell we're sinking a lot of destroyers now losing some submarines but overall I think I can keep this up uh, that is this big old bulge destroyed yes all gone it's looking a lot more solid now a lot more solid gonna counterattack up here because I noticed we lost the supply hub in Tickfin want that back should be able to I'm just happy the members are actually making this happen <laughs> look at this we're actually sinking capital ships now as well so uh this ragtag submarine fleet is getting in the kills baby we're getting in the kills just gonna do it i'm gonna make that cannonball run here and try 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 to get up there a little bit of a thunder run hopefully it doesn't end with the death of what remains of the soviet army uh, we're getting to archangelsk potentially. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, so we have Arkhangelsk as well. That means all these guys are going to get cut off. And that means this guy is going to be expensive, but I need an offensive. I need an offensive from you. And I need an offensive from you right the F now. Take Arkhangelsk. Go. So I have all the ports up there under my control. Where are the supply hubs here? These are mine. If I can push up there. Oh, if I can push up there. Do I close the pocket or do I set up for a counterattack? No, I'm not going to get greedy. I'm going to close the pocket and ensure victory 
that way. These guys are all going to have to divert there. Okay, we're back in business. We're back in business. Sweet. We also got supply and other railways built. That was a move. That was a move. That's why I like tanks. That actually worked out very well. That set us up for some measure of success, at least. Okay, and then I'll reposition the infantry for a northern push. I'd like to get somewhere here-ish, but there is, of course, no supply hub in the area. We'll see. We'll see what we can do. I, th I think we have opportunities here now. Good amount of kills, good amount of territory liberated, and we no longer need medium tanks, so I'm gonna cut all those production lines. Small-scale counter-offensives should be worthwhile. Use them to bleed the enemy dry bit by bit. Yes, 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 yes. They're weak now. Encirclement galore, encirclements everywhere. Kill them all. I'll happily kill them all. all right, I'm gonna have to make an executive decision. I need to free up manpower. So I'm gonna remove... Yeah, I'm gonna remove that. That should bring me about 160,000 manpower. Let's see if we can break through with a concentrated tank. Oh, we're breaking through with a concentrated tank push. So let's see if I can get to that supply hub up there. Uh, go, go, go. Just drive around the enemy if you can. Uh, no. No, I got too ambitious. Too ambitious. Can't win everything. All right, new day, new me. We're gonna go on an adventure. I am going to start driving my tanks south. Honestly, I don't know what else to do. <laughs> we're gonna see if I can get some of the Great Plains back under my control. Should be able to, considering that the AI is currently so weak, I think they can barely stand on their own legs anymore. So amusingly, this southern push in the Great Plains, or the many stuns, has gone very well. The enemy is super weak. I've taken most of the supply in the area back. I'm gonna link up with the main front, and then I'm gonna drive them back just a little bit to the edges of supply. So I'm thinking Umsk there, and to the south, yeah, we're already as far as I really wanna push. It. I've mostly been sinking a bunch of ships in the Black Sea and biding my time while I build a supply hub up here in Arkhangelsk. Once that supply hub's built, I'm gonna try another offensive to try and knock out the Baltic Unitary State. They should be really weak. They really don't have the manpower to keep things going. They don't have the army to keep this going either. If I can get them out of the picture, that would be amazing. And then I just need to worry about the Germans. That is all for now. I've managed to train another army that I've sent down here to help shore up the front, but more on that later. I think we're doing okay. I've taken a lot of my manpower back by pushing into the south here, which is great. I, I desperately, desperately needed manpower here. And another pocket. Yay. It's not huge, but again, every little bit helps. Oh, baby, baby. Union of Soviet Republics looking a little bit thicker than we were at the start. Not quite where I want to be by now, but you know, uh, beggars can be choosers. At this point, I'll take anything. Also got a bit of an air force going on, but honestly, I don't think it's doing all that well. Uh, no, no. Maybe I should just ground my air force. I, I don't feel like the, oh, that reminds me. I should probably do the focuses that make the air force a little less. So probably should be doing this. Yeah. Let's see how far I can punch through these weakened enemy divisions. The members should be fine. They've taken a lot of casualties, but I should have the tanks to... Oh, I'm a thousand tanks short. Yeah, it's been an expensive couple of years, I admit. I admit. We're gonna have to do this now or never. I'm gonna go and try and break through. Should be able to. I mean, these are just mostly infantry. I should be able to push infantry relatively easily, as you can tell. Like, they're melting. They just have a very great deal of infantry. <laughs> Let's take Grozny and the other supply hub in Dagestan. That should cut off most of their supply. And then let's see if I can actually make it down to Baku. Let's get a consistent offensive going on here. As I'm taking the supply hubs, the enemy units are crumbling. They are starting to fall under the weight of the infantry and tank offensive. And now I just need to keep it going. Oh no. Got myself encircled in Baku. That's not clever. I, I did manage to reach Baku though. <laughs> so there, there is that. Don't lose that tank. Oh, for the love of God, don't lose that tank now. Okay, they linked back up. Let's see what the easy part... Uh, okay, next step, Tbilisi. See if I can get the armor into Tbilisi. All of this is mountains. All of this terrain is quite terrible. It's, it's a necessary evil pushing through here. I know, I know it's not optimal in any sense, but really, I, I can't afford to wait for optimal. I don't really have what it takes to... <laughs> 
<laughs> wait for optimal right now. But that push did secure most of the local supply for me, except for Batumi, Tbilisi and Yerevan, if I can get through now. But it's all mountains. Like I said, it's just so terrible to fight in the area now. I am not going to push through those mountains with the tanks, unfortunately. So we'll, we'll have to make do. We'll have to make do. It's fine. We'll, we'll be able to adjust as needed. All right, folks, uh, I have a confession to make. I've just loaded back into the game after playing until about the year 1959 and really not getting anywhere or getting anywhere <laughs> meaningful. So it got me very frustrated, very angry. I started making a lot of mistakes and doing the same thing that wasn't working, something I don't really recommend you do. So I've taken a step back, took a little break, and we're going to come at this from a different angle. So this is what I will try to make in terms of my modern tanks. I, I don't like that I basically have no heart attack or piercing. If it fails, I'll have to find another solution. But I think this amount of soft attack will help. It will require fewer tungsten to produce. And we'll see from here. I don't need as much tungsten anymore. I can make these tanks at full capacity can probably ramp down production a little bit and then put more in cast. So I'm building a small, relatively small air force and I don't need them to do much other than shoot enemy planes down. So I'm going to make them a little bit better by improving the cannons on the air. And I'm also going to start making some casts. And again, casts, very basic, uh, best engine I can fit, probably double jet engine because of the, the weight of all this stuff. Anti-tank cannon, I, I do like the anti-tank cannon. And then I usually slap on stuff like the rocket rails, maybe the small bomb base. So hopefully the fact that I don't need as much tungsten anymore helps out in the long run. Also means I'm able to start making some artillery again. Now let's look at our trade again. Okay, uh, we're good as far as tungsten is concerned. That is something at least. Next small change is I also want to start making some mechanized ramp up reliability and production cost. Make these a little bit cheaper, a little bit better and a little bit more armor and a little bit more speed. There we go. And put these boys into production as well. While I wait for all those changes to take effect, I'm going to take my tanks down here, take a trip to this weak point. I found four just basic infantry divisions here. I'm going to roll up my tanks here and uh, I'm going to try and punch through to that tile. That should cut off this entire section of the front. Would be a nice kill if I can make it happen. And collaboration governments shouldn't be forgetting about collaboration governments. They'll be certainly valuable moving forward. So let's make sure those go through as well. Yeah, armor went clean through. So these guys are effectively encircled. Now I just need to make sure the uh, opening stays, uh, well, <clears throat> open. And I'll assign some troops to make sure nothing suspicious goes on there. Germans and everybody else is going to launch attack after attack after attack. We should be able to hold. We're well entrenched. We're strong enough to fend them off. Which reminds me, once this wave stops, I'm going to switch out of static warfare. And we're going to grab smoke and fire. The extra breakthrough will be beneficial. I'm also going to get rid of the portrait of Karl Marx. I have all the manpower I need. I will get much, much more. I'm thinking either proper heritage for the supply bonuses, but everything else there's pretty useless. Or we get the officer core, but again, all of the extra stuff is pretty useless. The daily command power is nice. Quick improv, I think, is the better choice. Or elevated engineer core. Mm, railway guns are nice, but I don't have that many. Yeah, let's go with quick improv. So I have a slight... Just a slight problem. Uh, naval evasions get a little out of hand. So far, it's not a huge issue. I got my tanks ready. This will be crushed. The other problem is attrition. Attrition isn't working, so I'll probably need to reload the game here. So these guys are fully encircled. This is a lake. They they don't have a land connection back home. These guys are fully encircled. Attrition's not working. They seem to be reinforcing. So I might just have to reload the game. Other than that, getting some air out, getting some green skies every now and then, but it's, it's not a happy ride so far. Not a happy ride at all. Tanks do perform well though, like they're, they're blasting enemy infantry apart. Nothing infantry based can stand against them. A little bit of trouble with tanks, but if I just bring enough stuff, I don't have to worry about the tanks. And if I can't beat the tanks, well, I can I can always go around, right? Maybe this was the right idea. Just go soft attack on the tanks because uh, <clears throat> anyway, I started blasting. I, I am literally obliterating enemy infantry. As long as I don't run into tanks, I can go anywhere I want. Let's see if I can get the will no. The rest of the line seems to be holding fine. The naval invasions, again, I, I complain about them a lot in my videos. It's disgusting and annoying. But honestly, it's a constant drain on the enemy resources. They get weaker each time I kill them. So far, 24 million and a half, 24 and a half million casualties is horrible, but it pales in comparison 
to what the enemy has lost. They have lost almost 58 million men in total. Places like Germany are just devoid of men. Like, they have no more available manpower. They're on scraping the barrel. Uh, let's see what Italy has. 18 million, but also scraping the barrel. Spain, a million scraping the barrel. Turkey, also no more men. Let's see here. Manchukuo, still a million men. And Japan, also... Eh, a little low so everybody's weak blasting my way straight into Wilno as long as this doesn't result in massive overextension that's good to deprive the enemy of the re of the supply hub perfect got to make sure the infantry follows behind so I'm using the railroad function control B to funnel those troops in we'll keep the armor here to keep the door open and not to give up our gains and then I'm gonna try and push north a little bit uh, to open the corridor a little further again as long as I don't run into too many enemy tanks I can I can go places here I can still go places here the goal is to destroy the enemy's uh, supply network so places like Dagaf Pills sweet sweet little encirclement it's not huge but it will count <laughs> it counts and more pockets that are huge but every division destroyed is a division I don't have to worry about so rejoice my brother and there is success I've managed a significant push in the far east which is ultimately irrelevant but it did distract a lot of and destroy a lot of Axis units they have decided to start throwing themselves against my lines just just look at what they've got stacked here they're not getting through obviously I managed a push a salient if you will into Bucharest and Ploy Ploiesti so Muntensha is mine as well and from here I'm going to try a naval well no not naval an encirclement around Constanta or at least clean up the bulge in the area a little bit and green bubbles all over the front they're not getting through uh, it's not much but it's honest work I'll get through to the enemy eventually Eventually. Well, this looks to be mm, potentially the big one. Weirdness happened down south, so Bulgaria split in half again. I, I don't know why it keeps... I, don't, I think their disaster is just completely broken. That did buy me some time and some breathing room. The enemy is massively redeploying troops. As a result, I have a gap, an opening up north, trying desperately at that to push and cut this front line in half. And it looks like I might actually make it. I'm redeploying troops as quickly as possible to fill the line behind. Yes. Okay, so we've got this whole thing cut in half. Let's see if I can actually get into Riga. And let's also see if we can clear the Kurland Peninsula make it a little bit easier on us. As a result, we're going to have a relatively thin green line because green line is now stretching across the entire front. They will manage the full western front. Red army is going to focus on the entire Nordic front as it is. It's going to require some... <laughs> organization but we're holding uh, it's actually going somewhere now for the first time in a good long while so i'm happy all right so that was a good maneuver make sure the guard the ports in the region obviously and now honestly germany is probably wide open i am going to give this a try make sure i don't actually overextend green line because it is like i said very thin and i'm gonna launch a full-on assault with the base units against the nordic front to see if i can force a breach now let's see if we can force a breach and the tanks well the tanks can keep rolling for as long as possible get to some good defensive ground like rivers significant breakthroughs everywhere rolling the line back pretty much across the front uh it's costing me but i can afford to take the cost they can Oh, and tanks have broken through to the German backline. The downside here is though I can't really afford to push too far because of, well, the limitations of my manpower. I can't overstretch. I don't have the units to cover the full front that I am currently creating. But while I'm back here, let's uh, cause some issues here by taking uh, supply hubs, cutting up supply lines, creating pockets, kill as many divisions as possible. Just get through these front lines, break them. Oh, the tanks are just going. They're just going. I, I do need to close the pocket eventually because if I don't, significant problems come in my way. Oh man, these are nice pockets we've created. All right, these guys are going to die. Uh, yeah, I think, I think if I get green front rolling and brown front rolling all at the same time, I can probably overpower the enemy. Probably. It would appear we might actually be able to meet in the middle quite easily. Perhaps a little too easily? No, no. Perfect. 
perfect. Closed and done and dusted. That is a nice section sliced off. And now we kill them. Far too many Soviet lives have been spent in this, but it's almost over. I feel like it's almost over. If I can just break through and get and keep the ball rolling. I have to keep the ball rolling now. If I can get these kills, if I can destroy these units, we have them. This is pocket after pocket, encirclement after encirclement. Let's quickly wipe out these Japanese divisions behind our lines and then let's reassess and reevaluate. I think we have them on the ropes. I pretty sure we have them on the ropes now. We've almost inflicted 100 million casualties. Germany has less than 200 divisions left. Let's also see if we can get a knockout punch going on the Baltic Unitary State. That would make the Northern Front a whole lot simpler. We're gonna let Green Line re-establish some sort of uh, order. We've, we've got them pretty much locked down. Well, locked down isn't the right word. They've got a lot of divisions around still, so I wouldn't call this exactly locked down. But well, we're certainly moving the line forward now. Yeah, the armor has been committed to the northern offensive, along with an all-out infantry assault, and we're pushing. We're driving them back step by step. It's expensive. It's beautiful. A shame it took this long, but it is a beauty to see. Now, ideally, we can rush into Leningrad, because um, it's very easy to defend. Oh no, they got like a billion divisions there, but they're all low orcs, so I should be able to blast right through with my Ass Blaster 3000 tanks. Come on, blast your way through. Drive into Leningrad, set up shop there. I'll have the supply. Yes, I have Leningrad. Great, great success. Yes. And then I am going to keep this line moving for the sole purpose of crushing the Baltics for the odd they had in rising against us. Perfect. Look at these pockets. This is what happens when a frontline cracks. <laughs> <laughs> yes! If I can then secure the Nordics, I have two full armies ready to commit to an all-out assault on the west. It's gonna be a lot cleaner if I do it that way instead of uh, trying to be... Well, trying to win everywhere at once. If I could just hold the west for now, clean up the north, and then we can move on. Oh, look at this. I'm about to have like 63 Greek divisions encircled. It. Yes! <laughs> this like dozens and dozens and dozens of divisions getting trapped simply because my tanks move so quickly. They have so much soft attack. They blast right through and well, of course, the enemy is super weak. I've also managed to attain local air superiority if I can concentrate my entire higher air force over a single zone. I can get local air superiority, get some cast support going. Finland's gone. Punching my way through the north here has been disgustingly expensive, but I did manage to take the point here in Lapland that pretty much cracked everything wide open. My tanks are now running through the heart of Sweden. I can do whatever I want. I'm also going to create a Romanian puppet in a bit though. I think it might make things a little easier. Yeah, and once the Nordics fall, I just need to set up some uh, port cards and defenses around Denmark, and then I just get two full army groups committed to the push. The big final push to knock out Germany and take control of Europe. So admittedly, Sweden and Norway have proven tough nuts to crack, but I think I've gotten through the uh, thick outer shell into the juicy inner bits, taking out more and more of Germany with every little offensive. I'm outside Hungary, maybe I should just yeah, probably go knock out Hungary. We're almost there, boys. I've said that before, but this time it's true. And Sweden's gone, always a noble goal. Perfect. Now I just need to set up some defenses on the straight crossing with Denmark. Mop up what's left up there. Well, it, it, there is quite a bit left, but <clears throat> mop up what's left up there and that's it. Then I can just thunder across Europe. Germany's dead. They got nothing left. Barely any divisions. Spain, same there. Almost out of everything as well. Italy. Italy has millions of men left, but barely any divisions. Yeah, we've got it. We've got it. Yeah, I got distracted and uh, you you may or may not know, getting distracted, very dangerous. Ooh, that's bad. That's bad. Now the tanks are also very distracted and very far away. Once again, supply my biggest issue. I'm not able to crack the Norwegians like I, I would love to, simply because they are on the edge of my supply lines and I, I got so much tunnel visioned. Well, you can tell what happened. Yeah, this is, this is horrible. This is bad. Pulling the tanks back, gonna quickly try and mop that up. But, oh my god, the stain is spreading. I don't have... Oh, no, 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 no. Not now. Not now. Please, not now. So many Chinese divisions all of a sudden. Like, they had like 40 or 50 stacked on Oslo. Now they've made massive naval invasions. This is all not good. This is all very bad. Come on, just clean up, clean up. Fortunately, they're all relatively bad compared to my tank, so I should be able to contain and mop this up, but I just want this to be over. 
Please, it's 1960. I just want this to be over. Oh, the tanks are cleaning up nicely. At least I uh, was panicking there for a minute. I wonder what happened to my defenses. Are they that thin or did I just not? Yeah, I just did not actually cover this region. Oops. All out assault, the fall of Berlin. Great. I had a collaboration government on them, so it shouldn't take forever. Oh. There goes the German Reich. Okay, reorganizing the front lines because this is disgusting. This is always what happens when you capitulate uh, a big enemy. The front lines just become so horrific. Okay, so front line seems to be completely collapsing in Norway. Don't know why, but we are pretty much mopping up the rest of Europe now. Should be able to get good solid defenses in and just kill whatever the Axis have left here. Just get it over with. I just want to get it over with. Uh, the fact that we were able to knock out Germany on itself is just something I'm very proud of. The mess is almost cleaned up. That's mostly the Balkans, that's a problem. Caucasus front pushed back. We're actually advancing now because the AI is, well, let's just say not the smartest. The final moments of Europe. We are done. We're almost done. Just final cleanup remaining. I'll knock out Turkey to make it pretty and then I am done here. I am not doing this again. I still don't have any war support, amazingly, despite having overrun pretty much all of Europe. Well, Turkey's dead and buried. Let's clean up the borders and then I can go home. And with this, I am ending the final naval invasion I had to deal with. I don't care if they land a billion more troops. Come on, just, just get it over with. Get over with. Look at the map. Look at what we've done. There we go. The Union of Soviet Republic is safe and secure. It's 1961. I realize there is no peace deal. Please, I'm not going to get one. I don't want to play anymore. I think I've proven my point. This is over. Everybody's dead. The only people left standing, well, are the Americans. I hate that. The Mexicans, irrelevant. The Japanese, also irrelevant. And India. I'm not going to walk all the way over there. I almost, well, I very likely outnumber the enemy in both factories and manpower as well as divisions i've won this is the single worst one i've ever played please try this for yourself and see if you can win and then come back to me in the comments i hope you've at least enjoyed the video and i hope you want to click that like button just to give me a little bit of emotional support my mind is fried right now anyway see ya once again, thank you to War Thunder for sponsoring this video and checking out the game using the link in the description below to support the channel and receive a large free bonus pack, including multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters, and much more. Personally, I'm a huge fan of the advanced vehicle damage model. It lets you damage individual parts of the vehicle or crew in battle, affecting its performance in real time. You get to see a glorious x-ray view of the carnage your shots inflict. I suck at the game, but at least I can look at the cool explosions.